Hi, I'm Bruce Williams, CEO of the Greater Victoria Chamber of Commerce, and welcome to Chamber Chats. Uh, this program is happening, of course, in the traditional territories of the Lekwungen speaking Coast Salish nations, the Songhees and the Esquimalt, and it's our pleasure and privilege to live and work with them every day. These programs are made possible with the support of Island Savings, a division of First West Credit Union, and C SPAN Victoria Shipyards. So when I say the word co op, you think of a gas station probably. However, We're going to talk about co-op right now in terms of workforce and getting people work experience for companies like yours. And co-op programs happen through post-secondaries in this region. Joining me to talk about that, first of all, Dr. Kevin Hall is the uh, President and Vice Chancellor of the University of Victoria, who are a chamber champion, by the way, I'll mention. And Jeff Wilmshurst is here. He is the Vice President Partnerships at Camosun College. Gentlemen, welcome and thank you all for being here. Uh, There are currently three people working in our chamber office who are co-op students. Uh, One was a guy that came in and we kept him on. The other is a woman that did a term with us, is now doing part-time, and we have an active co-op student. Um, Kevin, just in the overall program of things, let's talk about what the value is of co-op and what it is. Yeah, thanks, Bruce. That's a great uh, it's a great question to start off with. Of course, you know, co-op is really about taking a student and placing them in a uh, in a study related uh, job, uh, hopefully study related. And I think there's mutual benefits for both the uh, the student. The student's going to get out there and, and get some real world experience. They're going to take their lessons from the classroom and they're going to, you know, put it to practice, hopefully. But I think also for the employer, um, you know, what we've heard is the students bring a diversity into the workplace. They bring a different type of thought process and helping solve some of the problems and and you know this current generation of students they love to uh, to to uh, to work on on problems that are relevant to today's society and so i think uh, you know it's a very beneficial for both and the the thing that i'm amazed at is at uvic at least about 20 percent of our students go on to a full-time job with their co-op placement and i think that's a fantastic story to the success of the co-op yeah, workforce has been a problem in this economy for a long time. It happened before COVID, during COVID, and it will be an issue after as well. You know, the other great thing about having young students is if anything goes wrong technically on the tech side, they can fix it in a jiffy. It's not people like me saying, oh, here, let me fix that for you. I know everything about computers. Not. Um, Jeff, on the commotion side, a lot of it is trades related too. So talk about that a little bit, if you would. Yeah, Bruce, you know, obviously we have a big trades program and, and part of that, in fact, is our culinary and our tourism, uh, tourism and hospitality programs. And if you look at where a lot of our co-ops are happening in Victoria, it has been in the tourism and hospitality industry. And of course, that's been hit really hard this year with, uh, with COVID-19. And so, you know, we, we, we've sustained some hits this year in terms of our placements, but we're, we're um, really optimistic about what the future holds. We're going to see a lot of students obviously being placed again, and 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 in the meantime, you know, we that's allowed us to pivot a little bit and to and to look at how we can diversify our co-op placements. So you know, we've been doing more in the tech industry, uh, working with some really interesting companies, um, and and some of our students have had some amazing experiences um, that you know probably five or ten years ago wouldn't have even existed. I should mention, too, that there's very often, Kevin, I'll put this question to you, there is grant money available for employers as well to take advantage of co-op student placement, correct? That's correct, Bruce. There's there's a number of federal and provincial programs that we try to work with. You know, the employers are going to hire our co-op students. We try to work with them and let them know what, what the funding mechanisms are that are available. And I think you've seen, you know, an explosion of this money in the recent federal budget, the federal government's commitment to driving a new knowledge-based economy means they put significantly more money into programs like co-ops. And so I think it is important and we, we hold a series of webinars, for example, with our potential employers every year to say, uh, you know, here's, here's how you can go attract some funding from the province or from the federal government. So it makes it actually a really good value proposition for the employer as well. They get a great pair of hands um, to, to use to solve some of their problems and to work in their workforce. And, but they also get some subsidies, which is fantastic. Yeah, and yeah, and, and I would add, Bruce, to yeah. that that you know, you, Vic, and Camosun are working really closely together on that. So you know, there's a webinar coming up in the next couple of weeks that both Camosun and UVic are participating in, and you know, we collaborate on all kinds of things in the region. And this is one of the one of the areas that we also collaborate in is finding co- co-op placements and working with local companies and local industries to find opportunities. Because you know, as you may be aware, uh, about uh, a thousand students a year transfer from Camosun to UVic. So we're really sharing much of the same student pool all the time. And therefore we're also sharing uh, the community and, and, and the industries and then the businesses that are here that are accessing our students. Yeah, the process of matching the students with the job uh, in some ways aligns with the needs within the economy in general. 
So I don't know, is there an audit process? Is there a consultative process to make that happen? Well, I'll go back to you for that, Jeff. So how do you know where these students need to go and what they need to have with them when they get there? You know, we, we, we've always worked really closely with local businesses in terms of understanding their needs. So, um, y- you know, we, we have um, uh, program uh, groups that, that uh, of industries who come together and take a look at the courses that we're offering to make sure that what we're offering is relevant to their needs. And we do the same thing in our in our in our co-op world, uh, where we engage with the with the local employers to understand, OK, you know, what kinds of, of, of um, learning do students need to have before the, to come in to be able to contribute to your business? And of course, on top of that, the expectation is that employers are also going to provide some of the learning that we can't provide because it's real world and it's in place. Um, so as Kevin mentioned right off the top, it, it's, you know, hopefully a win-win, right? It's, it's an opportunity for our students to learn some of the real world skills that they can only get in a business while at the same time, the business gets an opportunity to, to have a really dynamic young person who can maybe bring something new that they hadn't expected. Yeah, on-the-job training was the term for a long, long time. Kevin, with the UVic students, talk to me about that, about matching their skills with the correct part of the workforce and how that alignment yeah, look happens. At it. Yeah, I would reinforce what, what Jeff said. But uh, but I think, you know, for me, another interesting piece around this, of course, is when you're in first or second year university, do you actually know what you want to do? when you graduate from the workforce. And, and, and I think we find there's often students that uh, take a job placement because it interests them. It might not be totally aligned to the program that they happen to be in, but it's something they say, hey, you know what? There, there could be a future for me in this. And they, they go out and give it a try. So if you like, it's a bit of a, you know, try, try a career. Um, so it's great for those students that are absolutely focused. They know where they want to go. I'm a civil engineer, so I want to go into civil engineering. I want a civil engineering placement. But, you know, for a lot of students, it's about uh, exploring opportunities and options. And I think that's a great, also a great mechanism that can be very advantageous for, um, for both the, the student and the, uh, the employer. The language we use at the chamber right now as we move through the latter part of this pandemic is that we are all together taxiing down the recovery runway. Because at the end of the runway, you take off. And the people that are making those pivots happen within that trip are the pivot pilots. So I want to talk next more about aligning the pivotal things with jobs that don't exist yet. We are talking about the co-op program available both at UVic and Camosun College with the president of, the U- of UVic, rather, Dr. Kevin Hall, president and vice chancellor, and Jeff Wilmshurst is the VP of Partnerships at Camosun College. So, gentlemen, the technology obviously is just going to boom. It's going to be bigger than ever before. And there will be jobs upcoming that don't really exist yet. Kevin, do you hear a lot of conversation about that? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Bruce, I think as uh, the government, both federal and provincial, are making a commitment to to a new type of economy, getting away from just digging things out of the ground and cutting down trees, which is a, is, is a great industry and supports the, the, the province. But as we look forward to 30, 40, 50 years, um, you know, the application of technology across a m- number of platforms is going to become important. And as you point out, do we know what all those jobs will be? And, and I think it's a university and a college's job. And I think Camosun and UVic does a great job of actually teaching the basic skills that are able to scale up or down or, or, or sideways to other professions that students may wish to, to retake. And I, you know, I, I think the cult program is a great example. It's something we only think of when students are at, uh, at school. You know, could we use it more in our, in our advanced training, in our um, skills training that we you know, are all aspiring to start to do? Because I think um, you know, this economy and this province will start to become very sophisticated around med tech, clean tech, digital economy. And those skills or those companies aren't exactly in place right now. And so, you know, looking into the future, um, I think your question's a great one is, is, you know, how do we get that experience for students? Many of the students will also start up their own businesses. And so is there an opportunity, um, you know, to play some of our co-op students in some of the uh, small startups that we have within the region and certainly the tech sector is just full of startups at this point in time. Um, it's often a, a proposition is too expensive for a startup company, but is there something we could do around uh, perhaps fellowships through philanthropy or something to, to help students also get engaged in these early stage companies where you develop, develop a whole new set of skills than you do if you're working with a company that's been around 30 or 40 years? Yeah, Jeff, same thing to you. Uh, jobs that don't yet exist. What's that conversation like at Commotion? Yeah, that's a really interesting. I want to riff a little bit off what Kevin right. just said. You know, we we actually um, had an employer of the year who is probably one of those startups that is the job of the future kind of company. Um, and they're called One Voice, but they have a longer name and I have to read it to you because it's <laughs> you're never going to remember it, but it's hilarious. 
It's the One Voice Institute of Elemental Ethics and Education, Inc. Wow. Um, for short, One Voice. But they took six of our students last year. And I had to spend some time reading, going over their website to understand exactly what it is they do. Um, and they do all kinds of different things. And it's kind of project management for the tech world, I would say, is kind of how you could boil it down. But our students actually mostly worked on a project called the Myriad Experience. And the Myriad Experience is exactly what you've just been talking about. It's the, it's the stuff that is just coming up and in some ways driven by what we've just experienced over the last 16, 17 months. Um, and it, what it is about is travel experiences for individuals and families who actually never leave their living room. Mm. Uh, and so it's all of this sort of um, use of technology and immersive technology to be able to bring people to, I don't know, Machu Picchu, for example, um, because you couldn't get there in the last, in the last year and a half. Um, and maybe some people could never get there. They could never afford to bring um, their entire family there but they could afford to have an experience like this one. So our students were actually working on a, what I think is a, a really cool project, you know, by a Victoria a local company, um, uh, taking um, new technology and moving it into a, a, a whole new realm. So I think there's a lot of exciting opportunities just like that one that are coming. Yeah, current co-op students uh, have parents who understand technology and they understand technology. And old thinking would say that, well, universities are academic and community colleges are, are trades-oriented. The lines are blurring between the two, and I have to think that, that, Kevin, I'll go to you on this, technology is blurring that line, or if you will, bringing that together, because technology is going to drive it all, and these students know how to do that. Yeah, I think you're right, uh, Bruce. I think technology is, is the game changer that's going to require a whole different set of skills from, from many of our graduates. But, you know, the one thing we, we often look at uh, the transfer of uh, Camosun students into, um, into UVic, and I think Jeff mentioned about a thousand students a year. I'm actually amazed at the number of students that graduate from UVic and go back to Camosun also to develop the skills that they need to get employed, right? And I think this is what, um, what, what the current uh, job market and field is like. There's so much change and churn going on that to think that, you know, your four-year university degree is going to set you up for the rest of your life um, probably isn't the case anymore, like it might have been in, in, in my day. And I think the ability to have um, some skills developed at, at Camosun, for example, for UVic grads, and the ability to go into the workplace and test and try those skills out is, is just a great thing. And I think this is one of the things that, that I, I found really um uh, eye-opening about uh, Victoria when I came here. I had no idea. You know, when you talk about co-op in Canada, you, you defer back to where, where I come from, uh, the east part, uh, and Waterloo, right? Waterloo is co-op central. Um, I was absolutely, uh, you know, gobsmacked that, that there's so much co-op activity going on and, and that it is between this triumvirate of the Camosun, the University of Victoria, and the industries and businesses in Victoria. So it's a great, it's a great opportunity. And, and I do think this level of activity will really change the economy in this town and really start to push it towards a, a tech-based economy. Yeah, Jeff, same question with you, sort of that blurring of the lines. Camosun has always had academic and, and trades, but technology is now in the middle to bring them together. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, when, when I think of that for Camosun, um, you know, our showstopper is is uh, Camosun Innovates, who've, you know, been on the front page of the paper, it seems like almost every week with, with uh, new things that they've been doing and innovations. And and the great thing about what they do is, that, you know, they bring um, company, co local companies in to, to help work on innovations for those companies. But most importantly, they bring students in as part of that as well. So, you know, we've got students, local companies, and, and, and the, the tech piece of what Camosun Innovates does, and, and those things are all brought together. Um, and as Kevin says, we have an amazing ecosystem in this town. Um, with, with all of the, those things going on. Um, and I, I just think we're really, as a, as a, as a, as a, as a region, um, really on the cusp of something, I think, quite important, both educationally and, and technologically. Um, you know, we've got all of these really uh, amazing things happening at, at, at both institutions, and, and I would put Royal Roads in there as well. Um, and... And I think we have an opportunity to really kind of um, move the needle for the region in terms of the, the kinds of industry and businesses that want to be here, because we're going to be able to um, provide a workforce that those that those businesses are going to want. 
A uh, point was made uh, a few minutes ago, a gentleman, about philanthropy. I want to bring that into this and how that can benefit co-op students as well. We're talking about co-op studies at UVic and commotion and philanthropy does play a part in that. Talking today with Dr. Kevin Hall, who is the President and Vice Chancellor at the University of Victoria, and Jeff Wilmshurst, the VP of Partnerships at Camosun College, the co-op program. As I mentioned off the top, the chamber I currently have on my staff, uh, one full-time guy that came originally as a co-op student, another that did a term about six months ago, we kept her on, and we have a current student that's working with us too. So I have three of them in one place. <clears throat> you mentioned about uh, philanthropy, and Jeff, you mentioned the Innovation Centre at Camosun Interurban Campus. That was made possible by a very generous investment by Babcock Canada. That's so right. the students go to this facility. I think it was eight hundred thousand dollars. That's so, exactly right. Good so, memory. Thank you. I, money is good. <laughs> when so when those things happen, those students take advantage of that training that they can then take to the workplace that they're going to. Right. So that is part of the value in philanthropy. Tell me, and that's what the foundation does at Commotion. Yeah, exactly. And you know, when you look at what some of where some of our students are landing, a lot of them are in fact landing at Babcock um, eventually. Um, some of them go on to UVic and complete uh, you know higher studies, but many of them are, are landing in places like Babcock. So that investment by Babcock was a smart one for them uh, because they're able to actually um, take advantage of of the learning that's happened in the in the interaction lab. Um, and, and companies like Babcock, I would add C-SPAN, you will have seen last week uh, a more than $400,000 gift from C-SPAN to improve our uh, first scholarships for women and Indigenous peoples. Um, and then on top of it, um, some, some welding booths, which uh, we, we really need for our, our marine sector training. Um, and, you know, we look at the marine sector here in town. Um, and, and UVic is very involved in this as well. Um, this is uh, going to be one of the growth points for uh, for industry in Victoria. Um, um, the blue economy, the marine sector, those are, 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 are areas that both institutions are focusing on and I think are going to be pr- producing a lot of the jobs of the future, quite frankly. Yeah, when you go through UVic, uh, Kevin, you'll drive around and you'll see buildings that bear people's names or a company name. Uh, those are buildings that were created because of the philanthropy of people like Bob Wright, for example, the, the Center for Ocean Sciences at UVic. So the students that go through that, that take those co-op skills, take those skills into the workplace where they're going, right? And that's why the philanthropy matters. Absolutely, Bruce. And, you know, we're, we're absolutely um, incredibly lucky that we have both an alumni base and a local business and citizen base that, that has been super supportive of the university over the years to, to enable us to do some great projects. And Certainly in the co-op space, what we look towards is, is some subsidies of the wages, some, some fellowship or scholarships for students to go out and do these things. And of course, you know, we have the Coast Capital Innovation Center uh, that was also a philanthropic gift from Coast Capital. Um, the numbers I've got here for that is, you know, we've had 400 jobs come out of Coast Capital, uh, over $20 million investment into the startup companies. There's been a thousand uh, entrepreneurs, if you like, go through some of the training programs. So these are you know, pieces of the university that, that really impact also the local community because um, from my perspective, you know, this isn't just for, for UVic students and, and UVic staff, this is for the community. And uh, we're, um, we're about to also, you know, launch our, our presence in the city with our second innovation hub. And again, this is for the community. We, we want local startups. We want our students to, to get involved in, in driving the new economy, but we want uh, existing businesses to also be successful and to learn how to use innovation in their business. And, and again, the, you know, going back to the co-op, I guess, is, which is why we're here. Sure. And this is what we hear from some of the employers that students come in and they have this sense of innovation and spirit that perhaps uh, you've lost as a, somebody who's been in the company for 15, 20 years. You've just been doing solving problems the same way all the time. And to kind of have a fresh set of eyes look at that, I think, helps you helps your own business become innovative. We uh, did one of these podcasts with Captain Sam Sater, the base commander at CFB Esquimalt. When you look at the economic impact of the base, 6,500 jobs, $400 million payroll, $611 million economic impact. They do very extensive co-op programs, Jeff Wilmshurst, and that means that they are taking advantage of the students' education that they've had from you and UVic. Yeah, absolutely. We, we have... Um... Tons of students who obviously um, do co-op work uh, at, at the Esquimalt base. Um, we've had a long history of providing programming for the Canadian Armed Forces in general, um, uh, in particular our, our weapons tech program, which is uh, really renowned. Um, and, and so our connections to, to, to the forces and, and the co-op programs have been, I think, critical to for our students' success. And, and again, the, the, the Esquimalt base is a a huge part uh, of this community. 
Uh, I think sometimes we forget because it's sort of tucked away. Yeah. Um, but, you know, we, as you know, uh, five years ago, we established the Camosun Coastal Center, which is very near the base, um, just below the Songhees Wellness Center, where we're focusing our marine training. Um, and, and we have lots of um, folks coming from the base to actually take training programs there as well. So it's a bit of a two way, um, which has been great. Um, you know, it, it's really kind of, I think, strengthened our relationship overall, which I think is critically important for, for us and for the community. Something that's been missing through the pandemic, unfortunately, is the role of international students. And within the co-op program, Kevin Hall, I'll go to you with this one. They have international experience that they bring to Camosun or UVic that they can then, as a co-op student, take into a workplace. What's that going to look like when it comes back? Yeah, absolutely, Bruce. We, we typically place around 700 of our international students every year uh, into local businesses and industry. And again, we, you know, we hear from the employers and they go, yeah, these, the, the, the students really do bring this, this uh, diverse lens into, into the business. Um, many go on to stay in Canada and to work in Canada. About 20, 25% of our students uh, remain uh, in the country and they remain with the people that they've had the co-op experience. And so I do think it's a great opportunity for, for local companies to sort of expand their, their view of the world. Um, Particularly important, I think, is some of these students are also mature students that come in. They've also got global connections, and we've even had opportunities for some of our local employers who have hired these students to now start looking at markets in their own country with the student either going there as a representative of the company or introducing them to uh, to marketplaces. And I think, you know, that's the one thing I would say on my, my six months in Victoria, just observing that we do need to kind of build up our... Uh, our global connectivity somewhat, and, and certainly the co-op is a good way to do that. But- Guys, we're out of time, but thanks very much for this. The co-op program is an amazing thing. We at the Chamber endorse it 100%. We encourage you to look into it too through UVic or Camosun. Thank you both for being here. Dr. Kevin Hall, President and Vice Chancellor, University of Victoria, and a Chamber Champion, and Jeff Wilmhurst, the Vice President of Partnerships at Camosun College. Thank you both. We'll see you again for another Chamber Chat. For more episodes of Chamber Chats, go to checknews.ca slash podcasts.